are Krista and Jay Reiser and we're located in Washburn, North Dakota, which is central North Dakota. And we had a SARE grant a few years back that was about developing a mob grazing system for the sustainability and prof profitability um, of a cow-calf operation in North Dakota. In the grant we said that we would mob graze approximately 400 acres of native rangeland a year in a mob grazing system. Uh, so we were able over the two year time frame to cover 800 acres. The biggest thing we learned is it's not an acreage to be attained, it's a, a tool to be used on specific environments or specific areas that require that tool. In year one we did the, we mob grazed with uh, 200 cow-calf pairs and year two uh, was a drier year. We used uh, approximately 130 cow-calf pairs and with those, um, with the moves across the native range we were giving those animals anywhere between um, an acre to two acres uh, to graze per move and we were moving um, approximately four times a day with the first move of the day being larger and the last move of the day being larger. And we also learned that it's really important to watch animal performance. We wanted to make sure our cattle, like we weren't hurting their rebreeding or their weight gains. So uh, we were checking them all the time and making sure they had proper gut fill and that their manure looked um, the right consistency because we really, didn't want to um, hurt our animals because if we decrease performance that would not be good for our pocketbook and um, that w it's just something that we really had to pay attention to and learn um, and watch daily. It also took us a while to figure out how long our cattle could graze in a cell. We spent a lot of time going out there checking and making sure they had the right amount of forage and that we were getting the right trample to graze ratio which took us about half of the first season to figure out what we were doing. Uh, we learned that uh, more than five to seven days on the same lane uh, you would start seeing regrowth of the early earlier grazed uh, pat or cells and then those cows would not go to the further cells as well and you wouldn't get as good a harvest efficiency Along those same lines, if we did really long skinny cells getting up to a, more than a half mile away from the water source, the cows would get lazy and they didn't want to walk back more than a half mile to water. We also had some issues with grazing during really hot periods. Um, we wanted to move usually in the middle of the day when the sugars were the highest in the grass but it was too hot out and the cattle did not want to move so then we learned that we needed to go to more like moves at night and the cattle were grazing better just it was too hot for them to be grazing during the day um, another thing we learned was like the variability in the native rangeland our soils um, as we went from like our floodplain up to the hilltops um, there was a lot of change in production, so it was really hard for us to get our cell size and in our densities. The setup we use for uh, doing our mob grazing, we use a, a product called a bat latch, which is an automatic gate opener, um, so that we didn't have to be out here every time that the cows moved. Uh, we also use um, uh, pigtail step-in posts and uh, poly braid. Um, electric fence wire on geared rollers were our preferred method. Our favorite uh, pigtail posts are by far the Zerogruft posts. They seem to hold up the best over the long term for us and, and provide us with a pretty exceptional, um, pretty exceptional product. And we got to the point where we could put up and take down a quarter mile in about 15 minutes. So it's pretty um, simple to use once you figure it out for us. Um, it took us about a week to get cattle trained to the electric fence and the system and going through the bat latches. Um, the first week was just checking them a lot and making sure everything was going right. But after that they figured it out and we just kind of all learned as we went.
Thank you.